Welcome to a lesson that will compare using the washer and shell methods to determine the volume of revolution. Let's start with a quick review. One of the most important things to remember when setting up these types of problems is to sketch a representative rectangle which would represent a washer for the washer method and would represent a shell for the shell method. The rectangle is perpendicular to the axis of rotation for the washer method and the rectangle is parallel to the axis of rotation for the shell method. Let's go and take a look at some examples. In this video, we're not going to evaluate the integrals, we're just going to set them up for practice. Okay, so we have the region bounded by y equals the square root of x plus two, y equals zero, x equals zero, and x equals four. And that would be this region here. And we're rotating about the x-axis. And first, we'll solve this using the washer method. So the rectangle that would represent one washer, or in this case looks like it will be a disc, is going to be perpendicular to the axis of rotation, so it would look something like this. And since the width of this rectangle would be delta x, that tells us that we integrate with respects to x, so we'll be using this integral to determine the volume. So we have to determine the outer radius and the inner radius for the washer method. Well, the outer radius is the distance from the red function to the x-axis, as we see here. And this would just be equal to the function value, which is the square root of x plus two. And there is no inner radius, so this would be a disk, or we could say a little r of x is equal to zero. And that's pretty much all we need to set this one up using the washer method. The volume is equal to pi times the definite integral of big R squared minus little r squared, where big R is the square root of x plus two, and little r is equal to zero. Lastly, we are integrating with respects to x, and the interval along the x-axis will be from zero to four, so those are our limits of integration. Again, we're not gonna evaluate this. What we're gonna do is compare how to solve the same problem now using the shell method. So this is the same problem, so we have the same region rotated about the x-axis, but now we wanna use the shell method. So to use the shell method, the representative rectangle would have to be parallel to the axis of rotation. And that's a little more involved here because if we drew a rectangle in this region, it's bounded by two vertical lines. But if we drew a rectangle above y equals two, it's bounded by the vertical line x equals four and the function. So what this is telling us is we're gonna have to set up and solve two different integrals to find this volume using the shell method. Notice that the thickness or width of these rectangles are delta y now, which means we'll be integrating with respects to y. Let's go ahead and divide this into two different regions since we'll have two different definite integrals. Let's set up the integral for the lower rectangle first. So the volume will be equal to two pi times the definite integral of the radius times the height of this first rectangle. Well the radius would be the distance from the center of this rectangle to the x-axis, or r of y, and this distance would be equal to y. And we need to multiply this by the height of this rectangle. Well the distance from here to here will always be four in, in this lower region. So the height is constant. And now that we know we're integrating with respects to y, the limits of integration for this region here will be from zero to two. And that'll be the volume rotating this lower region about the x-axis. Now to determine the total volume, we have to add the volume that would be generated by rotating this upper region. So let's see if we can set that up as well. So it'd be this volume plus, the limits of integration would be from two to four along the y-axis. Now the radius, the distance from this rectangle to the x-axis would still be y, but what's gonna be challenging here is to determine what the height of this rectangle would be. We know the height would be the distance from here to here, so that would be h of y. But we have to think about how we're going to express this. We know the total distance from the y-axis to x equals four would be four units. So if we took four units and then subtracted the distance from here to here, that would give us h of y, or the height of that rectangle. Well, this distance here is equal to x 
determined by the function y equals the square root of x plus two. But remember, we have to express this height in terms of y. So we have to take this equation, y equals the square root of x plus two, and solve it for x. Let's go ahead and do that down here. So we'll subtract two on both sides, and then square both sides. So we have x equals the quantity y minus two squared. So if this x is equal to the quantity y minus two squared, we can use that to determine h of y. h of y will be equal to the total distance four minus the quantity y minus two squared. Now we're gonna stop here, but you can see if you had a choice between which method to use, the result would be the same, but the shell method is a lot more involved. Let's go and take a look at the same problem now rotated about the y-axis. So again, it's the same region, but now we're rotating it about the y-axis. And we'll first start by using the washer method, which means the rectangle is going to be perpendicular to the y-axis. And now we're gonna have the same issue with this method because we're rotating about the y-axis, meaning if we drew a rectangle in the lower region, it would look like this, bounded by two vertical lines, but if we drew a rectangle above y equals two, it's bounded by the function and one vertical line. And that tells us to use this method, we'll have to use two different definite integrals. Next, these rectangles have a height of delta y, which means we have to integrate with respects to y, so this is the proper integral to use. Again, let's go ahead and divide this up into two different regions. Let's first integrate from zero to two and then from two to four using the washer method. So we're gonna have pi times the integral from, again, we'll start from zero to two and the outer radius will be four. So we'll have four squared minus the inner radius, but again, that would be zero. And now this wouldn't be too bad, but that's only gonna be the volume of the lower region. But we still have to add the volume that we would generate from the upper region or from y equals two to four. Now the outer radius would still be four minus the inner radius would be the distance from here to here. And it must be in terms of y. Well this distance here would be equal to x based upon the function y equals the square root of x plus two. So we have to take this equation and solve it for x so we can express the radius in terms of y. And we just did this on the previous screen, but we'll go ahead and do it again. So again, we have x equals the quantity y minus two squared. And this would be the inner radius for this rectangle here. So we have four squared minus y minus two squared for the second definite integral. So the sum of these two definite integrals would give us the total volume of this region rotated about the y-axis using the washer method. And let's finish by taking a look at the same problem using the shell method. Same region with the shell method. So rotating about the y-axis which means the rectangle would be parallel to the y-axis, so it's gonna look like this. And the width is delta x, which means we integrate with respects to x, so here's the proper formula for the shell method. So we have the volume is equal to two pi times the definite integral from along the x-axis from zero to four. The radius would be equal to x, and the height would be equal to the function value, which is the square root of x plus two. So when we rotate it about the y-axis, you can see that the shell method was actually a lot less work than the washer method. So as you can see from these problems, if you have a choice on which method to use, if you're rotating about the x-axis, it's often easier to use the washer method. And if you're rotating about the y-axis, the shell method is often a little bit easier. Hope you found this review helpful.